you, Jesus. Today I'm going to be speaking on the subject. We have to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere. You know, we used to sing a song back home. We have so much to praise him for. We don't know where to start. But if you really look into your life um, in depth, you can see God has done so much. Lord, thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you, oh God, that I'm still on the land of the living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let everything that had bread today, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can start somewhere today. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All of us can look into our lives and could see something that God has done. And that is enough to give God praise for. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Glory. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The word of the Lord is very sharp and quick and powerful. Amen. And so we have to start somewhere. It is a wonderful thing to have a desire, a vision, a dream for your life. But we can't just exist and don't make any impact in our lives in this world. As believers, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the earth. Therefore, the word of God tells us in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. However, as powerful as a vision is, it, remain, it remains dead without action. That is why James 2, verse 26 tells us, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Talking alone, Wishing, hoping, planning, thinking, dreaming. All these things are good, but without actions, we wouldn't get very far. It is, a tr it is true that our flesh can't see how we're going to achieve what God wants us to achieve sometimes. Sometimes it's very daunting. Sometimes it seems as if it's impossible where man is concerned. But remember that when things are impossible with man, hallelujah, Luke 1 verse 37 tells us, for with God, nothing shall be impossible, hallelujah. Once God comes into the picture, what man seems to be so difficult and so hard and to be impossible, with God it is possible. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes we spend years wondering and worrying about how we're going to get to our destiny. When we will achieve this goal and this vision and this dream. He wants us as his children to stop wondering and stop pondering and to start somewhere. If you are honest, don't, you don't know where to start. What you need to do is to start by spending some quality time and some valuable time in prayer. Daily ask the Lord for direction. God, you put something inside of me, but I don't know where to start. Sometimes you want to start a little business, but the, the finance is not there. Sometimes the contacts are not there. Sometimes you don't know where to start this thing. You don't know how to go about this thing because your knowledge is limited, but you know something is inside of you. But you can start with prayer. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Start with prayer. When God sent me out on the mission field, when God sent me to start the work of the Lord, I couldn't see everything clearly in front of me. But God says start, so you start somewhere. Hallelujah. We were in the dark room. The Lord put us in the training ground. Hallelujah. The training ground was dark, but sometimes you have to go to the dark room. Experiences in life. Just obey God. You don't know how he's going to work it out and how he's going to provide and how he's going to make a way. But by faith, God say move, so you move. Hallelujah. And when you move by faith, God will go before you and clear the way. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. God will clear the way. Praise the Lord. I came with a word for somebody today that you're in a dark tunnel right now. You're in a dark place. You don't know how things are going to pan out for you because it's so dark. But as dark as the night may seem. Hallelujah. Weeping men joy for night. But joy is coming in the morning. I came to tell somebody that morning is going to break sometime. Hallelujah. It's not over till God said it's over. Hang on in there. Change is coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor there's a change coming. There is a change coming. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. It will not be always so. The tide will turn around at some point. God will see you through. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When you hear God tell you make a move, you just make a move by faith. Start somewhere. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Four leprous men were dying. And they were there. They, I'm sure toes might have dropped off. Leprosy was not a simple disease back in them days. Toes dropping off, finger dropping off. And they have all sorts of swell over them. And they were weak and all sorts of things like that. But in the farming, they decided we can't just sit here and die. We have to start somewhere. We don't have a lot of strength, but we're going to make a move anyhow. Hallelujah. And they began to make a move and God went before them and cleared the way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God cleared the way for them. Praise the Lord. It was only four leprous men coming into the city. And the people in the city said they heard some armies. Not one army they heard. They heard a multitude of armies coming their way. So everybody took off and went out to the city. And the leprous men, they went into the city. And they were no more starving. They had food in abundance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. And God used them to bring out the people who were in starvation. And everybody had food to eat. Because of four leprous men who made a move of faith. Come on somebody, we have to make a move of faith. Hallelujah. Start somewhere by faith. Praise the Lord. Why do we need to start in prayer? We need to start in prayer. And lay down a good foundation in prayer. No matter what we want to achieve in this world. Because Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 tells us. Trust in the Lord. With all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Many have tried to achieve success and prosperity in their own strength and their own wisdom and their own abilities. But they have failed and flopped big time along the way. Because the word of God tells us, Psalms 127.1, 1, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. No matter what we want to achieve in this world, always start with prayer. Amen. Amen. Put down a strong foundation of prayer. 
Just like how the buildings that we see, no matter how tall they look at the skyscrapers, the higher they are, the stronger the foundation have to be. And so we need to put down a foundation with prayer. Prayer must be the foundation of anything that will last the test of time. That's why the word of God tells us men are always to pray. Not to faint. Pray without ceasing. Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail it much. Glory to God. Praise the name for Lord. You know something? Jehoshaphat was up against three armies and he was in such a jam that he, he, he called a fast. And the people of God came together to pray and to fast before God because the armies that they were up against was much more than they could handle. And Jehoshaphat began to tell God about the case. And we find that in 2 Chronicles 20 verse 12, he prayed and he said, Oh, our Lord, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Sometimes you have to be honest enough to tell God, God, I'm in a jam and I don't know what to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he went on to say, but our eyes are upon thee. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't know where else to turn. I don't know what else to do. But I came to tell somebody who is in a situation that it seems as if the thing want to overwhelm you. It seems as if that the situation want to turn you mad. You don't know what else to say and you don't know what else to do. Be like Jehoshaphat and put your eyes upon the Lord. Hallelujah! My eyes, Lord. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why the psalmist David said in Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? The hills is not where the help is coming from. My help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. Which made heaven and made earth. Sometimes the enemy wants us to be looking at the problem all the time. Focus on the problem, focus on the situation all the time. And sometimes that's why he's creating so much havoc and restlessness in our lives. But, the, 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 you know, there's a song which says, why worry when you can't pray? And you know the word of God tells us, be careful, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Hallelujah. And the peace of God. Somebody said the peace of God. Hallelujah. Which pass it all understanding. Shall keep your hearts and your mind. This is why a lot of people are not enjoying the peace of God. They're not praying as they are to pray. They're just looking at the problem. Looking at the situation. The more you look at it is the more vicious it looks. The more you look at it the bigger it looks. The more you look at it is the more it seems as if it's something that's going to take you out. But when you take your eyes off the problem. And you begin to look up to the hills. You're not looking to the hills just to just look to the hills. You're looking up away from the situation. And you're looking beyond the hills now. Hallelujah. And you're seeing that your help coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. Who made the heavens and made the earth. If God made heaven and made earth. All he did was to just speak and say let there be. And there was. And the thing about it, everything that man makes, it could be aircraft, it could be boat, it could be anything. A lot of times they have to pull them one side and do a repair job. Buckingham Palace, all them places, and down in town, House of Parliament, all them there need a lot of refurbishment. But the sun that the Lord put in place is still shining. Come on somebody, don't need no patch up. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The moon is still working! 
The stars are still working. Hallelujah. The sea is still in action. Hallelujah. Everything is still working. And he just spoke them into being with his word. Hallelujah. So the same God who made heaven and made earth. The little trouble that you have. You think that is something for God to deal with? You think that is something for God to resolve? God can more than handle any case. Now unto him who is able to do, hallelujah, exceeding and abundantly above that you can ask or think, amen. I came to tell somebody in the house today, you might be up against a situation and you can't see the way out. You don't know how the, 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 the breakthrough is going to come. You don't know how the deliverance is going to come. But the God that we are serving, he is more than able. Hallelujah. And when it comes true for you, it may seem as if he is taking a long time. But when it comes true for you, he is going to be doing it exceedingly and abundantly above that you can ask or think. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise for the breakthrough that's about to come. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. He is coming through big time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, Glory to God. He may not come when you want him, but he's going to be right on time. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Oh, somebody ought to give God praise for the exceeding abundant blessing that's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be exceedingly and abundantly above. What you can ask or think. God is ready to do the supernatural. God is ready to perform the miraculous. God has not locked up shop. He's still in the deliverance business. Oh, blessed be God. He's still making a way where there seems to be no way. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a breakthrough God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a wonder working God. He's a miracle working God. Just put your trust in him. And see what the Lord will do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we bless you today, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God is a miracle working God. When you put your case into his hands, put down a strong foundation of prayer. No matter what you're having as a problem in your life, put it before God in prayer. Whatever challenge is in front of you, put it before God in prayer. Prayer changes things. For God is still in the prayer answering business. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house? God is still in the prayer answering business. Hallelujah. He has not locked up shop. Hallelujah. He's still in business. Praise God. Business closed down on the high street sometimes. Ever so often you go, you see closed down, closed down, closed down, closing down, last sale, closed down. But thank God for everything that God has been doing from creation. He's still in business. Oh, glory to God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. He's still in business. He hasn't closed up shop. His track record is still 100% intact. Still making a way. Still healing. Still delivering. And still giving his people the victory. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, you don't be faced by the challenge that is ahead of you. When you want to make a move in this world, the enemy will come up with some challenges. Everyone who has achieved in this life, whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, a businesswoman, a sportsman, a sportswoman, a musician, a singer, a politician, a preacher, men and women of God, we... You're looking at the end results. You're looking at the finished product. But it wasn't always easy. We had to sacrifice a lot of time. Sacrifice a lot of time in prayer. And we had to commit and dedicate ourselves to what God has called us to do. To get somewhere. Anybody who's going to achieve in this world is going to cause for sacrifice. If you talk to anybody who, who has achieved anything... They will tell you it did not come overnight. 
took them valuable years of studying, training, practicing, and sacrificing, dedicating to whatever they put their hands to. They started somewhere. And many will tell you that when they started, it was not easy. People criticized them and told them that you don't have what it takes. I have been there myself. People say, that little boy don't have what it takes. But thank God for Jesus. The little boy is still doing God's business. Somebody give God praise, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody will try to put you down along the way. Somebody will try to tell you, wait your turn. It's not your time yet. But no matter who criticizes you, when God tells you to make a move of faith, you have to start somewhere. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it may look overwhelming to the flesh. But don't give up. Keep on moving forward. Keep on trusting God. Keep on putting in your best effort. Hallelujah. If you're a student in this, in this room tonight, keep on studying and working hard. Hallelujah. If you're working on a job and you want to go somewhere and you want to develop, keep on putting in your best. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Start somewhere by doing the best with what you have. Yes. Because when you least expect, God is going to show up for you. Come on, somebody. And that sowing tears is going to wander reaping joy. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house for the turning of the time that is about to come for God's people. One day our labor will not be in vain. God is going to bring us through with flying colors. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord. The sowing is not easy. We have some people here doing farmers in this house. And I know sowing is not easy. But when you have certain type of soil dealing with, some of the soils are coarse. Some of the soils you have to go bring a little manure to go help richen it up because it don't have enough substance in it. You have to water when this here that the time is dry and all sort of thing. But when you're here, you put in all of your labor and time comes for reaping. You started somewhere and now you have the finished product. Amen. You don't have to go to Tesco go buy no carrot because you have the organic stuff right there in your kitchen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah, you have your own little uh, sweet potato and white potato. You have your own little different things here and your little uh, tomato and all sort of things because you started somewhere and you did something and now you have the product to show you that your labor was not in vain. Come on, somebody. So when you put in something, you're going to get results. Hallelujah. The challenge that you have to go through in the starting stages is not easy. Sometimes the enemy will tell you, why you not just give it up? Because it's rough. But keep on pursuing. Keep on moving on. Because the Lord rewards our faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Praise his name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. All of the athletes that we see out there running races they have to start at the starting line they can't just cut in while the race is going they have to start at the starting line and even when they start at the starting line they can't take no short cut and cut across nobody into their lanes and expect to go, go in first and go get no crown they're going to disqualify them so sometimes we are going through some process and we don't like the process. And we want to say, Lord, I had enough of this hardship. I have enough of this roughness that I'm going through. But the Lord is not allowing you to take no shortcut. Hallelujah. 
Job said it's long and it's hard what I'm going through. But all my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to wait right here until my change comes. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. It's rough sometimes and it's hard sometimes. But I still know my Redeemer live it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said he was searching for God and couldn't find God at one stage. But he said, Lord, I don't need to find you where I'm, look, where I'm looking for you. Because you know the way that I take, you know where I am. And when you finish with me and you finish trying me, I'm going to come out like pure gold. Somebody ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. The process may be rough now, but you are coming out like pure gold. You're going through your trials, but hang on in there. Don't give up. God knows what he's doing. And when he finishes with you, you're going to come out like pure gold. Yes. There is a starting point that the athletes have to start on. And they have to run the whole course. And then when they finish the finish line, then they can win their race. Good things don't come easy. There is a process that we have to go through. God is telling us today, don't be overwhelmed by the process. Just make a start by faith. Obey what God tells you to do. And you too can succeed. Many are achieving great things in our world today. Using biblical principles. How much more God wants his people to achieve. Because the word of God tells us in Philippians 4 verse 13 that I can do. I can do. I want you all to say that in the house. I can do. Make it personal to yourself. Can do. Hallelujah. You, you can do it. All things through Christ who strengthens you. It's not your own mind. It's not your own ability. It's not your own um, strength doing anything. But it's the Lord that is giving you the strength. So that you can accomplish what you're going to accomplish. Amen. God is strengthening his people. Who ask him for strength. When you're weak, tell God I need strength. And he will strengthen you right on time. Amen. Amen. To achieve anything positive in this world, it's going to take great effort. But you have to start somewhere. You know something? Sometimes when you have to go to work on a Monday morning, especially after a busy weekend, you don't feel up to it, you know? You don't really feel up to it. Sunday night, you're saying to yourself, work again tomorrow. The weekend that was looking so long, gone already. And you feel shattered. But you know you have to do something. You have to pull yourself together. You know you have to go. And we can't be like the people of the world. Because the people of the world we call in sick when they're not sick. But as a child of God, you're going to trust God for strength. And by, 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 you know, you're going to just put the case before God. Start somewhere and you're going to tell the Lord, Lord, I have these clothes to go get washed. I have to get them ironed. And Lord, I have to make sure that I get my travel card if I need one. And I have to set my alarm. And I'm going to go to sleep as tired as I am. As I wet down rat and I'm going to believe you for strength in the morning. And you know when you start somewhere and you pull yourself together. In the morning, God gives you the strength and you're able to go out and do your job. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is able when you start somewhere, he will back you up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I was studying, it wasn't easy sometimes. Sometimes the work seems overwhelming. Assignments and coursework can't be done. Exams every minute. And it was overwhelming sometimes. But you know, when I 
was thinking about the work, it made me very stressed out. But you know, after a while, I stopped stressing about it. And, and I said, let me just start somewhere. Yeah. Take up the book and you start to do your little reading, your researching, whatever you have to do. You start, make a start. And you know, by the end of the day, after you put in a little work, you feel better. You started somewhere. And by the end of the day, the end of the week, all your assignments, them finish and you put them in and you get your good grade. It all happened because you started somewhere. Sometimes the exam that is coming up, it seems hard, but you have to start somewhere. And when you start to revise, God begins to open up your understanding. Before I take up any book to go study, I say, God, Holy Spirit, teach me and open up my understanding. And by faith, I take it up no matter how tough the subject is. And I say, Holy Ghost, come and teach me and give me one-to-one -one instruction here. And by the time he finished with me, I go into the exam room and God brought me out all right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm trying to tell us today that no task is too hard for the child of God. Once we pray and put it in God's hands and we make a move of faith knowing that God is with us, we're going to come out with flying colors. Somebody give God praise in the house. Because we are coming out. You see, I like miss out. When it comes to church time, I don't have time with Satan. Satan can fool down a lot of church people. Because after a busy week, and you know that, um, work day to go go Monday morning. The devil could tell some people, let me stay home and iron my clothes and go uh, wash and all those things. He could tell some people that my knees are not feeling so cracking this morning. Man, he just come up with some dirty tricks. All sort of lies and all sort of deception. Only because he don't want us to come into God's house. And he seems to work extra on Sundays. And he just come up with all sorts of lies. Trying to tell us that we can't make it today. He don't make it easy for us to come into God's house. But I am determined enough. Yes. Satan, if you're trying to hinder me from coming into God's house, you have something coming. Because as determined as you are, I am more determined. Yes. And I'm going to start somewhere. Yes. I'm going to beard my skin. I'm going to put on my clothes. I'm going to pull myself together. And if there's any pain inside of my body, I'm going to say, in the name of Jesus, get out my body. And I'm going to walk to church. And by the time I reach the house of God, the pain has already gone. Somebody ought to give God praise in the house. Because we have to be determined. Glory to God. The enemy not going to make it easy in these last days. He don't want us to get through spiritually. He want to play with our prayer life. He want to play with us with the time in the world and everything is making it challenging. But we have to put on determination. Start somewhere. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to let the enemy walk this trick on me today. I'm making it to doctor's appointment. I am making it to every interview that they call me for. I'm preparing and I'm getting ready for work every day, Monday to Friday. One day the Lord wants us to come into his house. And the enemy must trip me up week in, week out. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Satan, wherever you come with your lies and deception, I command you in the name of Jesus... Get thee behind me. I'm going to God's house. Come on, somebody. And when I come into God's house, I'm going to come in and enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to enter into his courts with praise. Bless the name of Jesus. Especially when you know that the enemy has been trying some tricks on you all week. Trying to make your life a misery. And God has preserved you and kept you to come into his house one more time. 
we must make sure that it counts when we come into God's house and give him the praise that is due unto his name. Hallelujah! Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Enemy is trying to play all sorts of tricks with God's people these days. But I want to be like the psalmist David who said I was glad. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. For in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. You see, none of us were born adults. We were all babies at some stage in our lives. And so, when we started out, we were only crawling at some stage. Then after crawling, we learned to creep. And after creeping, one day the Lord help us and we get up and take two steps. Sometimes we fall down. Sometimes we get up and fall down many a times. But we did not give up. We have to start somewhere. And we kept on walking and kept on walking. Until finally one day we started walking strong and going up and down the place. Because the Lord made it possible. We have to start somewhere. And after walking, the Lord give our legs so much strength that we're now running. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless his name. My little son running up and down now. You think you could keep him down? Because he started somewhere and now he's making strides. You know something? The word of God tells us don't despise the days of small beginnings. And Job 8, 7 tells us though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end shall greatly increase. When we were little babes, we were just drinking the milk. Then afterwards, we move up and we start taking the porridge. And after the porridge, we start eating solids. And so when we started off to try to learn to talk as little babes, we only could say a little word or two. Sometimes stuttering to bring out a little word. And sometimes when we do get it out, we still not get it out too straight. But we're trying, we're starting somewhere. And little by little, the Lord allows us to pronounce words clearly and also to speak fluently. So when I hear my son trying to talk certain things, I encourage him. And yesterday he surprised me because he was looking at the letter E and he was pointing and he was saying E. So he's getting to learn his alpha, the alphabet is starting somewhere. And so this is how we all get to where we are today because we started somewhere. And little by little, God gave us the increase until we are who we are today. If we realize in the natural life that it's important for us to start somewhere, how much more as believers we must realize that to get our spiritual life to where we want it to be, we need to start somewhere. Many people today are living in sin for years and for decades because Satan has fooled them and told them that don't worry to start because you're too bad. You're too hooked on the pleasures of sin and you are too much involved in worldliness to even give serving God a start. Before you even start, the enemy is telling you that you're going to backslide. So don't worry to start. But there are many people today in this room that they gave us time. Some of them, they told us that after a month, you're going to be right back out here with us. So go to church, go to mission, say you're giving your heart to God. We're looking for you right back out here on the street with the boys. But years have passed and we're still in the kingdom today because God kept us. Somebody give God praise for his keeping power. When we start, God keep us to the end. Hallelujah. Praise his name. The 
enemy is a dirty liar. And he will tell you all sorts of lies to try to hinder people from serving God. And all of us who are saved today, whether for five years or for 10 or 20 years plus, we were born, we were not born saved, but God saved us. We started somewhere and God saved us and we are still holding on today. Amen. Amen. Paul himself called himself the chiefest of sinners. He said, I'm the worst ever of all sinners. He was killing and persecuting the Christians. He was making a mayhem out of the church. He said, I wasted the church. I made a mess of anybody who was calling on the name of Christ. But when he was going on with his cruelty, one day when he was going down the Damascus road, the Lord met with him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is able to transform the chiefest of sinner. And when God met with him on the Damascus road, he was knocked down off his chariot and off of his horse. And when he was knocked down, he heard a voice saying from the heaven, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he answered and said, Who art thou, Lord? How he knew it was the Lord. God sobered him up. Straight away. And God called him. And God transformed the notorious Saul. Into the apostle Paul. Somebody give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Two thirds of this New Testament that we are enjoying today. God used the apostle Paul to write them. Amen. God is able to turn anybody around. If God saved Saul, he could save any one of us. God, he said he was the chiefest of our sinners. And God made something wonderful out of him. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Come as you are, sinner friends, and sinner, sinner men and sinner women. The word of God tells us that some of us were fornicators, idolaters, idolaters, idolater, idolaters, effeminate, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revelers, extortioners. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, And such were some of you. But ye are washed, O glory to God. But ye are sanctified, O glory to God. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. When you hear the enemy try to remind any one of us of our past, you don't need to take him on. Because the Lord said, I put them in the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered anymore. We are washed and we are sanctified. And we are justified. Somebody give God praise for sanctification today. Through the blood of Jesus. We made a start and God has made something good out of us. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not the same as when we came to him. God has made something good out of every one of us. Today you may not be saved but you can start by repenting. By surrendering your life to Jesus and he will make a brand new person out of you. What God has done for Paul, he can do for any one of us. But you have to start somewhere. The best way to start is to repent. Give your life to him. Come to him just as you are. When you seek him, you're going to find him. When you search for him with all of your heart. Amen. Today, if you hear his voice... Hard not your heart. Make up your mind to serve Jesus just as you are. Don't let Satan fool you by telling you that telling you that you need to sort out yourself first. Because that is why a lot of people tell themselves, I am in all sorts of vices at the moment. 
I love my weed, I love my gambling, I love my this, and I love my womanizing, I love my this, I love my that, so I cannot come now, pastor. But the Lord is such a great and powerful God. It doesn't matter what condition that we are in. Any one of us, all of us who are saved today was in all sorts. But the Lord met with us just the way we were. So you don't need to shape up yourself. Come to him just the way you are. And when you come to him just the way you are, he will shape you and make you into who you are to be. Somebody give God praise in the house. Start somewhere just how you are. And see what the Lord will do for you. Because the enemy knows that you will never get to start out yourself. You cannot do it in your own strength and in your own ability. You have to come to him just as you are. And then he will fix everything else. Many have gone to hell and are going to hell rapidly in our world today because of procrastination. Procrastination means to delay and to postpone and to put off. Anytime you want to make a move for God, a spiritual move, don't procrastinate. Don't put it up for another day because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Jesus could come any moment. Jesus could call you home any moment. And so you have to really move while the spirit is talking to you. The word of God tells us in Acts chapter 24 verse 25. That there was a man by the name of Felix. And so Paul was speaking to him. And he reasoned to him about righteousness and temperance and judgment to come. And Felix trembled. Felix was under conviction. But when Felix was under conviction, he didn't surrender his heart to God then. Instead, he said to Paul, Paul, go your way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call back for you. Felix, according to scripture, never found a convenient season to call back for Paul. And that moment when he was under conviction, he let it slip by what I'm trying to say today is that if you're not a child of God, now is the time, now is the acceptable day of salvation because you just don't know about and tomorrow you don't know if it's your last chance. He may never convict you again. The Holy Spirit does not always strive with man. And that's why we find that Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 tells us, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 tells us. And you shall seek me. And find me. When you search for me. With all your heart. Amen. You may be saved today. And God has promised so much to us. The port of his spirit upon our flesh. Yet you are dry spiritually. Look warm and cold. But God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever God promised that he will do, he will do. We just need to align ourselves with God's word and start. Some way start Bringing yourself in line and obeying what God tells us to do. He's not just talking just for fun. He wants to move as a matter of fact. God is more willing to bless us and to empower us and to revive us more than we are ready to be revived. He's just waiting for us to get in line. He wants to move. We are the ones who have to start somewhere. And begin to make the extra sacrifice. Why do I know this? Jesus himself tells us in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hallelujah. For they shall be filled. Glory to God. So if we are hungry enough and we are thirsty enough after the things of God. We will go the extra mile. We will wake up early in the morning if we need to. We will stay up late at night. We will make some time during our busy schedule. To seek God and to get hungry again. And get thirsty again after God and after his anointing. And when we are hungry and we are thirsty after righteousness. The Lord says he's going to fill us. Oh glory to God. 
Glory, we have to start somewhere. We can't stay as home. We are and expect to get our breakthrough. We got to make a move of faith. God is waiting on us. He's ready to move. But we have to start somewhere. Put in the extra effort. Go the extra mile. Lord, I'm not satisfied with where I am. I'm going to do something extra. Until you fill me again. Until you anoint me again. Until you empower me again. Until you revive me again, Lord. I'm going to pursue until I get what I'm looking for. Thank you, Lord, for the little mercy drops here and there. But you have the showers. And I'm pursuing it, Lord, for you promised to pour out of your spirit. Upon our flesh in these last days. A lot of distractions around. But Lord, earthly pleasure don't make me feel fulfilled. A little financial um, excelling and getting a little house don't make me feel fulfilled. A little nice car don't make me feel fulfilled. Deep inside of me there's a longing for something more. And Lord, I'm hungry. And Lord, I'm thirsty. And I'm starting somewhere from this very day in pursuit of my fresh and filling of your Holy Spirit. And once we're hungry and thirsty enough, God is going to do it for us. That is his promise. Many of us have heard the preach word over and over again. The prophetic words have been uttered over our lives. The preach word has gone forth. And we know God is about to do something. But God wants us to bring ourselves in line with his word. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success hallelujah so this is how the breakthroughs are going to come when we start to pursue God and get into his word and apply his word and obey his word we got to start right there all these blessings that we read in Deuteronomy 29 and 28 that we are going to be head ahead and not the tail we are going to be in front and not behind Amen. The, the enemy shall come against us one way and flee seven ways. Hallelujah. The blessings are going to overtake us. But God is telling us we have to get in line with his word. That's where we have to start. Right there. When we start there, God is going to do what he says that he's going to do. And Psalms 1, 1 to 3 tells us, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. We have to get back to the word. We have to love the word. We have to cherish the word. We have to read. We have to meditate. We have to apply the word. His delight is in the law of the law. And in his law that he meditate day and night. And when you do that, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring it forth fruit in due season. Your leaves will not want, not wither. But whatsoever you do it, it shall prosper. Somebody give God praise in the house. For God is ready to prosper his people. Once we bring ourselves in line with his word, God is going to do what he said he's going to do. That's where we have to start. Applying the word of God, obeying the word of God. And God is going to make our way prosperous. And he's going to give us our breakthroughs. If you're not saved today, today is a good day. To come to the Lord while you have a chance. That's a good place to start. Give your heart to the Lord. And God will work everything else out for you. Amen. If you're saved, you're a believer, but you want to tell yourself, I can't stay here in this condition no more. I'm going to be like those lepers. I'm going to make a move of faith today. From today, I'm going to start, make a fresh start, a fresh commitment to God. And I'm going to see God change some things in my life. You may be sick, but you want to make a move. Like the woman with the issue of blood. I got to do something. I got to get 
moving until I touch Jesus. I'm going to press my way against all the odds until I touch Jesus. Make a move of faith today. You don't want to stay in your same condition year in, year out, week in, week out. God wants to do something new in your life if you make a move of faith. If you want prayer for any reason at all, you can join me at this altar. Make a move. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.